Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the basic interface for editing a layout. Railroad Automation has two modes, an editing mode and an operation mode. The editing mode is used to define all your layout objects and how they interact with each other, while the operation mode is used for running your layout. You can look down here to see which mode is currently active. There are several ways to switch between the two modes. You can toggle the mode from the toolbar like this, or you can go to the tab that represents the mode you're working with and click on the mode. Or if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can toggle the mode through F5. For this tutorial, I'm going to stay in edit mode. While editing your layout, you will be mainly working with three panels the switchboard, the object browser, and the properties. These panels should be visible by default, but if they've been closed, you can toggle their visibility from here. Now I'm going to open a sample layout. Okay, let's move the object browser here on the left. Same with the properties. Now the object browser is a tree view that displays your entire railroad object hierarchy. Notice that while any object in the tree is selected, the properties panel will display the details about that object. The properties panel is always in sync with the selected object, also known as the context object. If you ever want to see what you can do with an object, you can always right click on it and get the context menu specific to that object. Context menus, however, will have different options when in operation mode. We'll talk more about operation mode in later tutorials. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the last panel, the switchboard. The switchboard is a graphical representation of your railroad objects and it's also linked to the other two panels. Let's zoom in here and take a closer look. By the way, if you hover over this icon down here, you'll get a tooltip with keyboard and mouse shortcuts for zooming and panning options. So back to the switchboard here. The editing surface is divided into rows and columns, creating a series of squares. Since more than one object can be related to a square, the switchboard has four editing modes to make selecting overlapping objects a little easier. The modes can be seen here and the current one is highlighted. For example, take this square here. Since I'm currently in track mode, this track gets selected and becomes the context object for the other two panels here and here. If I were to go into block mode and select the square again, the block associated with this track gets selected and similarly becomes the context object. Same goes for route mode and finally signal mode. In some cases the selection can still be ambiguous. For example this track belongs to three different routes so a selection menu will display the three possible choices. Here is the first, second, and third route. Since the object browser and the switchboard are linked, selecting an object from the object browser will also select it in the switchboard. And the coinciding switchboard edit mode becomes activated. No matter where the object is selected from, all three panels will reference the same context object where it can be configured from here. The switchboard, like the object browser, is also context menu driven. The context menu is dynamic to factors like which square your mouse is over, which edit mode you're in, whether an object is selected, whether certain actions can be performed on that square, and so on. It's a good idea to look for what you need in these menus. Chances are, you'll probably find it. 
Okay, I think that's a pretty good overview of the editing interface. I'll go more in depth about each railroad object in future tutorials. But for now, thanks for listening.